Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. Today will be super helpful video to any of you that have a Hyundai Sonata with a 2.4 GDI engine and you need to remove, replace cylinder head gasket or cylinder head. Stay with us, we'll explain step by step how to do that. It will be a very detailed video that can save you guys thousands of dollars and you can do the job yourself. Now, uh, before we uh, continue, let me just tell you a little bit about us. Every single car we get at the garage, we try to make at least two to 300 free repair videos. Why? Simply because our mission in the shop is to save you as much money as we can all we need in return please subscribe to the channel like the video that way we can keep providing as much as many videos as we can absolutely free for you guys now if you need to buy any parts tools for a good price and quick shipping check out the link in the description of the video below that's where we get all our tools and supplies from usually unbelievable really good price and shipping is amazing as well so that's it right here that's the cylinder head gasket okay that's the gasket that's the cylinder head here that's the engine block Let's go ahead and explain what needs to be done now, step by step. So in order to remove the oil pan, we need to remove the lower bolts on the AC compressor with a 12 millimeter socket. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, one bolt is extremely, extremely tight, so we'll need to break it loose, okay, with a ratchet and then we should be able to get it out. Let's go ahead, see if we can do that. Maybe use the impact so we can save a little bit of time. Everything happens quicker. Okay, so we don't need to waste your time, guys. So we can just get to the repair. Now, <coughs> that bracket right here for the AC compressor needs to come out. You can see that bracket. Because it's holding actually the open and there is hidden bolts underneath it that you cannot access. So with the same 12 millimeter socket, I believe we have three or four bolts. Okay, let's see where exactly they are located. That's bolt number two. Then we have bolt number three. And after that, guys, we're getting to bolt number four and the whole bracket will come off. Perfect. Now, that bracket, as you can see, there is actually even more hidden bolts now underneath. And there are two bolts that are with a 12 point socket, 12 millimeter, 12 point socket. I'm talking about this bolt here. And the bolt right there, they're actually for the crankcase, so they're extremely long bolts that you need to uh, apply uh, a certain torque later. Okay, let me let me focus quick, I couldn't focus. Uh, this is a 12 point socket, that's what it looks like. Uh, you have to be careful not to strip them. I would never recommend to use impact with a 12 point socket. Okay, never use a 12 point socket impact. Okay, this is actually 13. We got a 13 because it can strip them, but uh, also, you have to be extremely careful, so I will recommend, okay, to do it by hand because 12 points with the impact, the impact uh, actually generates more torque and uh, that can strip them guys over at sudden. Okay, perfect. One's out. You can see pretty long board. Now, number two coming out as well. After that, we're pretty easy guys. We have uh, a few bolts, probably 10, 12 bolts, we'll see. Uh, with 10 millimeter socket okay that we need to remove so let's go ahead start on that i'm going to do my best to show you where they're located they just fall in the bucket that we have there and we'll get them now one of them is extremely extremely tight again so we need to Pretty loose in that one. Okay, let's see if it's going to take care now. Okay, perfect. That's great now. Let's see where else we have bolts. On the back side right there. Okay, trying my best to show you where they are. Now right here as well, and we go from here and we just keep going, keep going.
Now that oil pan should be stuck with silicone, but this one was recently removed. It wasn't resealed, but when you remove the bolts, it may be stuck and you may need to use a screwdriver and there is a spot where you can pry right here if you accidentally bend it. Okay, you can straighten the oil pan later because it's all made out of metal. So the oil pan comes out. Okay, you can see it just like that. Uh, now that's the silicone right here. Let us show you that's the silicone right here. We'll get the silicone that you need to use. But uh, if you have an oil leak or every time you remove it, you need to clean everything really good. Okay, really good. The oil pan, uh, uh, get a scraper, clean it with a scraper. Make sure there is absolutely no uh, glue, silicone, anything like that. Uh, then clean it with rubbing alcohol to make sure that it's not greasy. The same thing needs to apply to the engine block. You need to clean everything super good, guys. And you're going to apply three to four millimeter bead of silicone. Uh, uh, the gray gasket maker is amazing for that. Whoever used the black one, I don't like it. The gray one is the original one that it's used. And you're going to apply three to four millimeter bead on the inside of the bolts. Okay. And you're going to install it. Some people go around the bolts too. You can. A little bit that's uh, that's good as well I mean you can just go a little bit around the boats if it comes out later while it's still soft just wipe it and you won't be able even to tell that there is silicone but you can see oil paint came out just like that so next we'll be removing the uh, valve cover here for the valve cover we need to disconnect the ignition coils pull the safety out and just disconnect them pretty simple procedure guys you can see just like that same thing okay to cylinder number three and four respectively uh, we have the fuel uh, volume sensor on the high pressure fuel pump if it doesn't want to come out just pull that thing grab the connector push it in then release it okay okay it comes out because it gets stuck we need to remove the fuel line always have fire extinguisher on the side uh, fuel resistant gloves, eye protection, you spray some fuel when you remove that Avoid sparks, flames, anything like that, right? You don't want to catch yourself on fire So, perfect, this one came out Now, let's go ahead, okay, remove the high pressure fuel pump next So a little bit on each side Not all at seven. And right here is the camshaft follower, also known as a cam bucket or camshaft tap it or different names that I would recommend to actually inspect and replace because those do fail sometimes and it can destroy your engine as well so let's go ahead put it in okay now uh, next thing we will remove okay let's remove the ignition coils next okay to remove all the ignition coils here we're going to remove that mount okay we drop the ball we have to be careful for the wiring harness and then we will do the ignition coils we can go ahead and flip the wiring harness on the side now those ignition coils they have bolts with 10 millimeter socket <coughs> excuse me now we can easily grab each one of those pull them up okay it comes out just like that now uh, that valve cover attaches with uh, 20 or 22 bolts i don't remember exactly how many but it's quite a bit we have a special video about the torque specs later and what you need to do to make sure you don't have oil leaks uh, where you need to even though you're putting a new gasket every time you remove it you still need to apply a little bit of silicone at two places otherwise you will develop leaks so we'll go ahead start getting the bolts loose Preferably, okay, not to drop them. I'll just go ahead behind and pick them. Okay, when you're in the car, guys, take your time, okay? Be careful because. It just, uh, it's not worth it to drop bolts and start hunting for them for 20 minutes. It's a special bolt and you cannot replace it with another one. Two more around the oil pump housing, uh, the uh, fuel pump, high pressure fuel pump. Right here you have four more bolts that are kind of like in the middle. One of them is a little bit hidden, you may not see it from the oil cap. So go ahead, do those. 
All right. So let's go ahead. Pull that cover up. Okay, that line will come a little bit out of the way. And the valve cover, okay, came out. Now, uh, this is uh, the gasket here for the spark plugs, other gasket as well. Uh, every time it's recommended to replace that gasket. We have a special video about the torque specs for the valve cover. So let's continue with the next step now. So next, the timing cover. Okay, why we need to remove the oil pan, you can see first because uh, oil pan is actually on top of the timing cover. It has the bolts here as well. Next, we need to pre-loosen the water pump. Okay, uh, the water pump pulley bolts, pre-loosen them before you remove the belt. That way, uh, when you remove the belt, you will actually have the bolts pre-loosen because otherwise the pulley will be uh, will be spinning freely and you will not be able to remove it. Now, uh, practically, I'll go ahead, okay, recommend to just get them loose to where they go by hand, but we'll just use the impact so we don't waste your time, guys. So we can go ahead and do that quickly now, but you can see that's why you need to do it first. Now. Let's remove that pulley. Perfect, why we need to remove it? Because we have a few bolts that we cannot access underneath. Right here we need to remove, okay, that's a hardware pulley. Let's go ahead and remove that one now. 14 millimeter socket. This one is normal threaded. You go counterclockwise. Now we need to remove the tensioner pulley. This one is reverse threaded, okay. So we need to get a 14 millimeter Okay, let's go ahead, okay, and do it, perfect, you can see how that one is reverse threaded because otherwise you go counterclockwise to uh, release the pressure so we can install the belt. Here, in our case it's 17 millimeter that we need to get, uh, this is uh, because you need to come out because there is a hidden bolt underneath as well, let's do that. You will need to have the engine really well supported under the car because you will not have the passenger engine mount. We'll have a special video that explains how to replace passenger engine mount on Hyundai Sonata. So if you need help, please feel free to check it out. Now, let's go ahead and remove the mount for the uh, engine, uh, the bracket for the engine mount. So those are 14 millimeter bolts, one of them, somebody installed the wrong type of bolt, whoever worked on that car last time. Either it stayed somewhere for a long time and they lost bolts or they had no idea what was happening, guys. I think combination of both, which sometimes that's why I prefer to work on my own vehicle so I know what the problem is. Crankshaft pulley now. In order to remove the crankshaft pulley, there is a special tool that you use actually to install, okay, on the transmission bell housing right there you see that hole here and you remove that board there it goes and locks the flywheel in the teeth guys or you can do it through actually through the starter hole as well you can do that as well you have two bolts there that you can uh, use as well so with that being said now okay let's uh, let's explain something now guys uh, we used air compressor and an impact. This is the impact that we use. Air compressor is very small but super powerful compressor. This one here, oh, excuse me, 165 psi, only six gallon, but it's able to do jobs like that usually with this. Okay, only one time we had a hard time removing one board with it, but usually it does it great if you have a, uh, that linker so rent really good, uh, really good powerful impact. So ours is pretty loosened so all we have to do just remove now the bolt pretty simple let's do that and we should be able to remove the pulley now okay let's grab it perfect now right here let's explain what we have specifically we need to start let's start with the 12 millimeter bolts first this one you don't need to remove Okay, that's the only one that you don't. In some cases, maybe on some engines you do, but on this one you don't. You don't need to worry about that one. Okay, I want to... Okay, let's remove these two. And uh, I want to just remove that one to see. It's a short bolt, but I want to show you, okay, what you can see through it. Because somewhere there should be the tensioner. Okay, let's see what's here. Okay, that's the tensioner. You can install now, guys. Okay, the thing for the tensioner practically you can access the uh, timing chain tensioner okay to see it 
Okay, and to adjust it if you need to, but it's uh, nothing major now because it's self-adjusting uh, hydraulic tensioner. Now, right here, 10 millimeter, and we're going to go ahead, do all this. Okay, that's what we're doing now. Let me make it, maybe make one good intro picture so you can get the idea when you guys click on that video where we're working kind of like that it fits on Sonata now that let, let me explain something you can get penetrating spray okay oil penetrating oil I'll put the link in the description of the video below apply on that guide here that's super rusty and one right there let it soak while you're working on all that and then re-soak them again you will have rust and that will make the cover to come out hard and if you pry too much that can easily crack it's super thin and we've done that in the past and they're expensive to replace you have two prying spots one here one over there and then i think you have one on the bottom here and one over there so you have four prying spots that you need to actually go a little bit at a time because it will be resealed it will have silicone and it will not come out easy but you can see timing cover came out now the timing cover uses the same silicone as the one for the oil pan that we show you the gray gasket maker right there but you need to clean later everything really good okay really good uh, clean the engine block as well clean the timing cover uh, clean it on the bottom where the oil pan will be uh, actually contacting the timing cover you need to use degreaser i would recommend maybe rubbing alcohol clean everything good and the block as well where they will be contacting apply later when you put it together about two three millimeter bead of silicone and reseal everything if you do it wrong you have an old leak from the timing cover but it came out and you can see here is the timing chain and all the internals of the engine for the next step guys okay for the timing chain removal i will recommend to remove all the spark plugs put a screwdriver you're going to turn okay the crankshaft and make sure that all pistons come in the middle okay not one to be high one to be low so we're going to okay now this is tdc point this is all the way low check it out now i'm going to go to the one that's tdc let's turn it okay turn 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 and i'll show you there is a trick actually check on all four cylinders okay and that's it in the middle so if something goes bad you're not going to bend valves if you look at the pulley okay that key right here when it's on the left side that's tdc point okay when guys okay that key is at 90 degrees angle okay you're actually going to have all pistons in the middle because when it's to the left cylinder number one and four are up when it's to the right cylinder number two and three are up put in the middle everything will be leveled and you can actually see that kind of like through the hole here as well okay for the pistons in some cases too now that way we don't need to worry about okay anything else now for the timing chain if you're removing it replacing it i always recommend to replace the oil pump as well some people just replace the tensioner uh, the tensioner arm and the guy which is still okay because there will not be too much wear but in case you need help with that we'll explain how to do the oil pump chain because many people make a mistake they will try to remove that pulley and then you need to buy a brand new oil pump assembly with a balance shaft because everything will be out of balance never remove that uh, uh, that uh, gear there as well so now we can remove the tensioner let's go ahead do that all right perfect we're going to pull it out <coughs> excuse me next uh, we're going to get actually 10 millimeter remove the tension alarm it will come out just be careful not to break anything i would recommend to always install everything new but nothing to fall anywhere that you don't want it to three on the tensioner guide right there perfect okay you can see that's out of that handy tsunami right here guys okay now let's go ahead okay and explain what else we need to do at that point you can grab that timing chain okay and you can pull it out okay you can see the bottom one comes out on the top as well and this is the timing chain now the lower one how you do that let's explain that okay pretty pretty simple now i want to show you again where we were okay so if you uh, look at it the lower one okay first no right here we need to remove everything on top timing chain guide tensioner arm and uh, we need to remove the uh, tensioner itself 
which this one is not hydraulic it's spring loaded it will shoot out so be careful there will be a spring in the piston itself okay because it just spring loaded it's not a hydraulic tension you can see all the gunk here that's stuck as well so let's go ahead remove that one now just 10 millimeter socket perfect and <laughs> later okay we need to remove this one and now if you try to remove that chain it will not come out guys okay it will not come out it's not long enough if you try to pull that socket it will not come out because the chain is short again okay i'll try my best it doesn't work so what you need to do you need to remove the oil pump and balance shaft assembly and that's with 12 point socket okay the 12 point socket is the one that we use for the oil pan 12 millimeter there is a specific torque specs when putting it together so we'll share that in the timing chain installation video you need a big tool like that because those will be actually pretty pretty tight okay uh, so just be prepared that it will require quite a bit of force guys to do that let's go ahead remove the bolts remember that oil pump and uh, timing chain uh, excuse me balance shaft oil pump and balance shaft assembly is pretty heavy on the last bolt you need to really hold it good otherwise okay it can okay it can fall on you and smash you and break your head guys that's probably not to say big word but it's probably close to 10 pounds i don't know so we're removing the bolt some of them are long some of them are shorter So check it out, that's what we're doing now. Perfect. Now on the last one. Oh, we missed one somewhere, let's see. Yep, we missed one, I see it. Right there, <laughs> the most inconvenient one. Okay, now we grab that. It's going to come out in an angle. And then you can pull it out and later okay we have a special video that explains how to put everything together timing chain marks and timing chain installation on Hyundai Sonata now you can even pull that gear if you need to it comes out as well okay for the timing chain on the oil pump so that's how we got everything out of here now so next step that we need to do we need to remove the uh, direct fuel injection pump housing three bolts with 12 millimeter socket that's all we have to do we will go ahead remove it okay it may be a little bit stuck because it goes in two metal guides or maybe three right here you can see where it attaches now uh, first thing we need to remove the caps for the cam caps we need to remove them okay we need to do it by hand we need to remove them in specific order otherwise you can damage things and you need to install them exactly in the same order that you remove them let's say this one is from here that's where it needs to go so get a box and line everything where it's supposed to even mark them if you have to with paint on top with something scratch them and say one uh, let's say after this one one two three four intake uh, one two three four exhaust so later you can install them exactly the same location now we're going to go ahead okay go to the next one now towards the very end step number three you go to right here step number four over there Step number five will be the last ones. A little bit on each side will be recommended. Perfect. Now we need to remove them exactly in the same order that they come. So we'll grab them. Okay, perfect. One came out. Now we're going to get another one. almost ready to remove the camshafts guys just two more caps two more bearings and they should come out you grab the camshaft and intake exhaust come out of here you can see just like that 
So next, for the cylinder head removal we need to remove the fuel injectors. Have fire extinguisher on the side, avoid sparks, open flames, have fuel resistant gloves, I will not recommend quad gloves. Eye protection, you have uh, pressure and fuel here leaking out of the fuel rail, we have our one alre uh, ours already pre-drained, so that's okay. Now the fuel injectors right here, you see they have that safety locks, okay, these gray things need to come out, gently pull them out. Uh, once you do that, okay, okay, no, right there, once you do that, let me show you what you need to do right here, you uh, grab the connector, push it in, then press down and disconnect it, okay, because it may be stuck here, okay, it's the knock sensor, here is the oil pressure sensor, we're going to go ahead, disconnect that one as well, so let's do that, and next we need to remove these three bolts. Okay, let's go ahead, do that now. So, fuel rail will come out, you have fuel leaking, make sure you have a rack to collect all that. One bolt fell out. Okay, let me see if I can... Okay, gravity fell, came out, injectors are here. Uh, you can remove them, sometimes they may be stuck, so wiggle them a little bit and pull at the same time, they will eventually come out every time you remove those. I would recommend to put new seals here and here as well, so make sure, okay, that you actually do that if you're removing the fuel injector. Next step, we need to disconnect camshaft position sensor for the intake side, the one for the exhaust side. Need to come out, right here we have one connector. Okay, one clip that we need to disconnect. This one, if you press the two pieces on the back side together, it will come out. It just takes a little bit of patience and practice to do all these clips, guys, and wiring harness as well. Now, the thermostat housing needs to come out of the cylinder head. Here, guys, we'll have a few things. Okay, uh, so this is the thermostat housing. The thermostat housing attaches to the cylinder head with three bolts, uh, two bolts and one nut, one bolt here. Okay, let's go ahead, do that one quick, okay, 12 millimeter, let's go ahead, do that. Now, we have one more nut, okay, that's actually right here, and this one is under, okay, let me show you where it is, right here, that's a nut, actually, you need to access it from underneath, and unfortunately, we need to get a long extension, okay, longer extension to be able to do that, uh, or you need to get a wrench, it works too. If you get a 12 millimeter wrench, you can remove it from right there. That's the nut, you can see where it attaches to that bolt on the cylinder head. So let's see if we can actually remove it with the extension now. Perfect. Okay. I just saw it right here, guys. That's the nut. Okay, we have one more bolt that we need to remove. The other bolt is uh, located. Let me just collect them here. It's located right here under the wires, this wire. Okay, here you push up on one. Okay, this one you push down, but this one's broken. It will come out of the clip. And if you look at it, that's where the third bolt is. It's a little bit hidden. Every time you remove that uh, uh, thermostat housing, replace the gasket, that's a weak spot, guys very very weak spot so let's go ahead do that so here if you look now we have the coolant pipe going to the uh, water pump that will be stuck so we need to kind of like grab the pipe too and wiggle 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 okay and the thermostat housing comes out you can see just like that perfect now all that is out that's the gasket that i will recommend to have replaced because otherwise two gaskets you will develop leaks there in the future now what else we need to do let's explain that thing now so next we need to remove the bearing right here that's for the camshaft okay so be very gentle not to damage it but gently okay pry it up it will come out because here we have a hidden bolt okay that we need to remove let me get that contamination out triple socket triple square socket excuse me it's called a triple square i'll put the link in the description of the video below where you can get it from triple square m12 socket so we'll start with bolt number one right here let's go ahead do that now 
it will be extremely tight so you might need to hold it with the foot a little bit if it's unless it's on a stent or anything like that perfect we'll pre-loosen that one we go to bolt number two right here that's the second one the, it matters which uh, way you remove a head gasket and cylinder head otherwise you can rub the cylinder head gas people don't know that they think it matters which way you install it but you just uh, remove remove it as well so i'm going to hold the engine quick here bolt number two let's go to bolt number three right here okay i believe that one was the next one three that's right so i'm holding the engine perfect bolt number four right there Perfect. Bolt number five here. Okay, you just uh, have to be careful. Now uh, we go to bolt number six over there. Okay, we're working on that one now. Bolt number seven over here now. Now, next step will be bolt number eight over here. Okay, that's tight. Then we have bolt number nine that we need to do there. And after that, we just have one more bolt left, which will be bolt number 10 over there. Let's go ahead, do that now. Perfect. Next, <coughs> let's go ahead. Remove all the bolts since they're pre-loosened. At that point, it doesn't matter the order of removal. Eight of the bolts have pressed in washers. Two of them, uh, eight of the bolts have pre uh, actually loose washers, and two of them have a pressed in washer. So, eight of the bolts, the washer will come with the bolt. I think. Yeah, that's right. Eight have pressed in washers. So eight bolts. When you remove them, the washer will stay on the bolt, just like this one. Let me show you now. This is the washer. Okay, right there, and two will have loose washers, and we'll explain how to remove those as well. When you replace the bolts, uh, when you replace head gasket, cylinder head, anything like that, every time you remove cylinder head, you need to install new bolts. And uh, these two are the one with the loose washers. You need to make sure that you install the, the, old, the new washer as well, because the old washer will have different friction. Okay, perfect. This one's there as well. Now let's do this one exactly the same way as well okay this one got stuck okay so uh, we need to <laughs> see where exactly it fell towards the back now if we turn the cylinder head upside down all the valve lifters will fall so what we'll do we'll actually put the camshaft with only two caps on each side okay maybe one here okay or maybe we can do the big one here and one on each side so that way okay uh, uh, we're not going to get them tight enough to, to, to torque specs just a little bit uh, because you always need to lubricate everything really good when you put it together so even when you're putting it like that I'll recommend to lubricate all the bearings again and uh, just go ahead and install them so just the things cannot fall okay you can see no torque at all that's perfect okay let's do two little ones on the back exactly the ones that are supposed to be there and that way we can remove the cylinder head and the cylinder head gasket without dropping the valve lifters so let's let's actually do that perfect so we're going to get 
Okay, we're going to get 10, uh, 10 millimeter socket and just get those tied a little bit. And uh, at that point, okay, you gotta make sure the coolant is drained on your car. When you remove, to remember the uh, thermostat housing, I forgot to mention, but you need to have the coolant drain. And later when you put everything together, don't just add coolant, you need to bleed the cooling system, because if you don't bleed the cooling system, you can severely overheat your engine. So, now, we're going to get the cylinder head, pick it up, okay, it should come up, right here it's a little bit stuck, perfect, it comes out, okay, let's uh, lift it up again so I can get the gasket out, never leave it on the box, or we'll be rebuilding that engine, but you can see, cylinder head and cylinder head gasket came out. Now, to put it together guys, and the cylinder head gasket, torque specs and timing chain installation videos for Hyundai Sonata will be on our channel, how to. Okay, install timing chain and cylinder head gasket, torque specs and bolt sequence, that video will be on our channel as well. Also, we have a special video that explains the symptoms of bad cylinder head gasket and cylinder head as well. Hopefully the video will be helpful. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.